It's a trap and it's easy to fall into when you first get started with video and that is this belief that you have to get expensive equipment before you get started and it's not true. I know what this is like because I had a video production business and I was definitely compensating for like a lack of confidence by buying equipment. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you it's not true because we're gonna be going through how to capture great video with your smartphone. I'm gonna be showing you my favorite application. It's called Filmic Pro that gives you manual, powerful controls over your video camera on your phone, above and beyond what you can get out of the box with an iPhone or an Android device. So I'm gonna be showing you some of the settings that I use to capture video videos just like this one so that you can get started creating your content today. So the first thing we're going to go through is how to set your exposure, the brightness of your image, and how to set the focus of your camera lens. There's a couple of ways to do this, so I'm going to show you first the most basic, simple way to do it, and then we'll go into the slightly more advanced before we dig in through a few of the settings to help you get the most out of this application. So the first thing is this round reticule is going to help you set the exposure, how bright your image is. So if you see here, I'm dragging it over the bright areas and the brightness is changing depending on where I place it. If I leave it on the white circle, it's going to keep changing as you're recording. So you want to lock this in by tapping the circle when you're happy with how bright the image is. Then you can move it and then it's locked in. It doesn't make any difference. The rectangle is going to help you set your focus. So if you drop that here, you can notice it'll go like a bit of a pulse. Now I'll move that up here to the plant and you can see it kind of focuses on that. So it depends on where you drop it. Now again, if you leave it on the white rectangle, it's going to be constant constantly measuring your focus and changing while you're filming. So that could be handy in some situations, but if you're doing a talking head video, you want to make sure you lock it in. So drag and drop the rectangle on the area where you're going to be recording. Basically what I do is I hold my arm out in front of the camera and then I tap the rectangle on top of my hand and about the position where I'll be standing. So it's something you got to kind of play with. Obviously, if you're going to be standing standing further away from your phone, you won't be able to do this. So you want to use some sort of an object or subject to set your focus if you're going to be using this method. Next, I'm going to show you the more advanced way to do it, which will give you more control. So we're going to go into these controls here. And when I turn this on, I get these two wheels on the left and right. On the right hand side, we have focus. So we can drag this wheel and it'll change the focus of your lens, which is pretty cool. And when you're doing that, one of the things that can be really helpful is to turn on some of these settings to show you what's going to be in focus. So we're going to turn on FP and this is going to show you in the green, the bright green, what's in focus. So it's just a really quick way to get a reading of where the focus area is. And if you leave it on that setting, that's exactly what's going to be in focus when you hit the record button. This one here is going to show us what is exposed correctly. The bright green is your exposure and that's good exposure. Anything in the blue is underexposed, which means it's a bit darker, and then red is overexposed. And sometimes having a bit of that's okay. You want to make sure that your subject, whoever's going to be the focal point of the video, whether that's yourself or someone else, is green when you're looking at this particular setting. The next one here is, again, exposure. It's just viewed differently. So you can see here the white the brightest area of the image is red, and then we've got some dark areas here. If we control the exposure, you can see what's happening here. The image is becoming underexposed and overexposed. So it gives you a quick measurement of where you want to be. The zebra stripes are essentially the same thing. It's just another way to view it. So I'm going to turn those controls off for now and let's dig into a few more settings. So this wheel you can see is what's going to control the brightness of your image. I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to pick my resolution. 
So I want to use 4K for this video and I almost always use 16 by 9 because you could always edit your videos later to one of these different ratios if you wanted to do that. So I'd rather have the 16 by 9 which is standard for a lot of video, especially things like YouTube. So we're going to leave it on that setting. The next thing we're gonna check is our frame rate. This is how many images are captured per second, your frames per second. And I usually use somewhere between 24 and 30 frames per second. And that's good for talking head videos. It's the standard that's been used for movies, cinema, television for years. So this looks natural to most people. If you're gonna be doing B-roll or visual shots, then you might want to go a bit higher, like 60 frames per second, because then you're capturing more information and that gives you the ability to speed up or slow down your video more. So if I was shooting a video in 30 frames per second and then I wanted some slow motion stuff, I would use 60 and then slow it down to 30 so that they match and you can see that it's just it's just that slow buttery smooth video you can go higher this really depends on what device you have there is some limitations based on what resolution you're using don't worry too much about these other things i'm just going to leave them as is the next thing you can check is your audio you want to make sure that you have an external microphone whether that's just your headphones if you don't have anything else it's still better than the built-in mic the built-in mic is not great for capturing audio if you have an external mic make sure you check this setting if it's plugged in or you got your apple airpods or whatever you're using then make sure that this is set to that device. 48 kilohertz is a standard good quality for your audio. You can leave these other two settings the way they are. Some of these settings are based on your device too. So if you have an iPhone, your settings might be different. If you're on Android and you see this option, stitch recorded footage, make sure that's turned on because if you don't, then your recordings actually cut off and you end up having multiple files for one video and it gets a little bit disorganized quickly so i like to have that turned on orientation lock is going to be for you know locking it out i just have it off because i'm never going to switch when i'm shooting a video and i very rarely will do a video where i'm holding my phone with my hand usually using a gimbal or a tripod in order to capture smoother video content. So those are the most important settings in here. You can kind of check some of this stuff out. I do like the presets option. You can save your settings so that when you come back to this app, you've got all your settings preloaded and you can save multiples of them. So you might have one for 60 frames per second and another one for 24 frames per second. One could be for 4K, one could be for 1080p. The camera icon allows you to switch between different lenses so you can turn these on, you can switch. This is very dependent on what device you have so keep that in mind and you just want to basically use the main one, that's what this one is here. If you are doing any hand holding without a tripod or a gimbal then make sure you turn the stabilization on. This is going to make your image more smooth when you're moving around. Never really use the torch, it's always better to use natural lighting or some you know lights on stands if you have them. I always have the guide turned on. I want to make sure that I'm standing in one third of my image. That is this line here or this line here. You're standing in one side of the image, then you can have bullet points or something coming up on the screen on the other half. It's also more visually appealing for to the human eye to go with the one third for some reason. Not sure exactly why that is, but if you know, let me know in the comments below. So the next setting we're gonna look at is the exposure wheel. So I've gone ahead and I've set 30 frames per second at 1080p. I'm actually going to change this. So we're going to go with, I want 4K. I'm going to leave these two on the highest settings possible to get the most amount of information captured in my video. And the frame rate, I'm going to put it at 24 frames per second. So the first thing you want to make sure you do when you've got these settings is you want your shutter speed, which is this here to be double your frame rate. I have 24 frames per second, so I'm going to use one over 48, that's double. That's just a standard rule of thumb that you wanna use when you're filming video content with manual settings. 
your shutter speed should be double your frame rate. If I was using 60 frames per second, I'd want the shutter speed to be set at 120. This icon here is very dependent on what device you have. I have a Note 10, so I'm able to control the aperture a little bit, which is the physical opening of the lens. So I can set that to an f-stop 1.5, which is as wide open as it goes, or I can go to 2.4, which is a little bit more closed, and that just stops as much light coming into the lens. The benefit to having it wide open is that you're letting more light in and you can control depth of field more, which is your focus wheel. So it's just a couple of things that you can play with. The next thing I want to show you is to lock in your shutter speed. This is ISO here, which is artificial light. It introduces artifacts into your image. So we usually want to have ISO as low as we possibly can. The only time you might want to increase ISO is when you have a low light situation and you can't fix it with natural lighting or external lights. So just to show you really quickly what happens, I'm going to set my shutter speed to 1 over 48 and now I'm going to click this to turn it red which locks it in. That means that the ISO could fluctuate in my image. So if I move this, you can see what happens. I'll turn the ISO up. Now we've got this graininess that's showing up in the image. So you want to really have this as low as possible and rely on external lighting sources like natural light through a window or any lights that you might own. You want to use those to control your lighting before you use ISO. So the next thing that I want to show you that's going to really help you step up the quality of your video content is color temperature and that is white balance same thing if you move this across you can see that the color is changing the tint of the image is changing there's some presets down here i almost never use these no matter what camera i'm using i want to have control over the white balance if you've ever seen one of those videos on like facebook or something someone else has posted maybe even your own content and you see the color maybe even on a zoom call this happens you see the color is changing someone gestures in front of their camera and then the greens and the red colors and the blue colors are fluctuating throughout the video and if you want to step up the quality of your video you want to lock in that white balance so i don't use these settings i go down here and i turn on the automatic white balance now i would never use this one in particular the blue setting is going to constantly measure and change while you're filming so we're actually going to use either the red which locks it in right now it's taking a reading and it locks in the white balance it won't change or the orange one which will automatically measure your white balance as soon as you hit the record button so you're getting the most recent information that's the one that i use and recommend these other two settings you won't have available unless you're willing to pay for the additional upgrade at the time of this recording, the Filmic Pro app is about $20 on the App Store and the Play Store. Uh, these upgrades are an additional fee. I like to use it because I wanted to try out the log format, which is a more neutral, balanced image quality, so you can actually do color grading. You can modify the colors while you're editing. So don't worry about that for now. Just use the stuff that I've already showed you and make sure that you start to film your content today. So we went through a bunch of stuff with the Filmic Pro app. We covered focus, exposure, shutter speed, frame rate, resolution, lots of awesome stuff. Don't forget white balance. And if you have any other questions, then let me know in the comments below. If you got any value out of this video, then make sure you subscribe to the channel, smash that like button if you have already and check out this video over here which will help you step up your game when it comes to filming with your smartphone thank you so much for watching to the end i really appreciate you and i can't wait to see you creating a ripple effect with your video content